and it's eight o'clock. Oh, hi. Okay, it looks like we are live. Yeah. Woo -hoo. All right. Awesome. Hi, Mukris. Hi, Christopher. It's uh, nice to have you guys here. All right. Hey, how's it going, Debbie? Okay, we are live. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hakim. I'm your host today. You're in for a very, very interesting Pecha Kucha. We have so many interesting speakers, as we always do. This is our 13th Pecha Kucha. And if you're tuning in, this is a slightly different format. Uh, over our first 12, we've done it live and in person, in co-working spaces and in event spaces. But today, the event space is in your living room or your bedroom, depending on where you have your computer now. We're really excited to have you on. And uh, hurry up, Labro. OK, we, we should jump right into the wonderfulness of today. It should take about an hour. But before we jump into any of the wonderful speakers, let me tell you who we are thankful for, because we are thankful for many people. Um, we would like to thank all the people that put this together. Um, the first person that we want to thank are uh, the global organizers of Pechukucha. They have been uh, so awesome to put together these online Pechukucha sessions. Uh, Pechukucha Inspire the World. I believe this is the third or fourth session globally. So go Malaysia, go Ptaling Jaya. And um, we're actually joined by the founder today. Um, and I can't wait to hear from him. Um, Aside from that, we'd also like to thank some other people that have followed us through the journey of Pechikucha over the last uh, couple of years. I think it's uh, we're in year three this year. I don't mistaken, it's year two. Huh? Um, and uh, I'd like to thank our friends over in PTIX. They help us get registered, but they also help us get connected. Um, oh, I mustn't forget, uh, for those of you fasting, uh, Salamat Barbuka Puasa and uh, happy fasting for the rest of the month. Um, we wish you uh, patience and uh, lots of positive points. And back to thanking people. Uh, oh, more slides. Um, you know, uh, in, in line with the wonderful month of Ramadan, and also, I think the generous spirit that everybody is kind of feeling right now, um, we want to say that this Pechikucha is a slightly different one in addition to the fact that um, it's online. We also are not charging you guys for the first time in 12 Pechikuchas. Um, and the reason for this is because we can't send pizza to your house. So we thought we'd kind of uh, tweak it a little bit and say, whatever you would pay for a ticket to come for Pechikucha, please donate that money to our friends in uh, dignity, dignity for children uh, org slash donate. Uh, whatever you donate to them um, is uh, tax deductible. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, but you also get to support some of the uh, amazing work that they do. They provide education to kids that really need it um, from uh, underprivileged families, from refugee families, stateless children, and uh, poor, poor Malaysian uh, children. Uh, they provide this in uh, the form of Montessori education for primary and below, whereas uh, they also provide vocational training for uh, slightly older kids. I, I've been to their location and it's, it's quite amazing. So um, if you guys are um, able, please uh, head on to dignityforchildren.org slash donate and uh, give generously. I will be reminding you guys throughout the evening. So much love there. Um, now, we have uh, some wonderful people to thank. Hopefully, it's in the next slide. Yes, it is. <laughs> wonderful. Um, we want to thank the people in PTIX. PTIX, 
uh, they're such lovely uh, human beings for helping us coordinate the whole um, online streaming that you hear today. Uh, they've helped us put it together. Uh, shout out to Yilin. Um, you'll notice that um, we have collabs and Friendly Human. Now, while we are not running this session out of the wonderful co-working space collabs, uh, they have been uh, such awesome partners. So we want to point out that um, we miss you collabs and we can't wait for MCO to be lifted so we can uh, go back and host live events in collabs. For those of you who are from collabs, please give us a shout out and uh, send us some love. Um, we also have some friendly humans out of Atlanta, Georgia, who um, who are uh, also watching, and um, we send them love. Um, we want to give you a heads up that today, aside from the uh, presentations that are happening, we're also going to be scribing uh, the presentations live. There are three scribes from Malaysia and Singapore. Um, we'll get to see a little bit of some of their wonderful work uh, at the end of each presentation. I'm really looking forward to that. So I think um, all the notes are pretty much done other than one really important one. We're trying something slightly different. I mean, we're trying everything slightly different, but today, one of the uh, things that we want to do is we're going to do question and answers at the end of the session. So if you have a question, a burning, I need to know the answer question, or if it's a, hmm, I'm kind of curious, I wonder what kind of question, please uh, shoot it into the comments in Facebook and YouTube, uh, which of which we're both live at, and uh, we'll, we'll bring that up a little later. Um, Let's move on to our first speaker. Our first speaker is kind of a kind of a big deal. He's kind of cool. And uh, are we? Are we? Yes. There we are. Hey. Our, our first speaker uh, is uh, well. This this man. His name is uh, Mark Dytham, and he is the father of Peche Kucha, in so much as in 2013, Mark, along with his co-founder uh, in his architectural firm, actually set up Peche Kucha in Tokyo um, as an event to bring together young designers uh, so that they can share their work. Um, what started in 2013 in Tokyo has now grown to some 1,200 cities, Mark. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you all about it in a moment in my presentation. So <laughs> not to give too much yeah, away. Like over a thousand cities. Over a thousand cities. Amazing, huh? That's crazy, Mark. And uh, just having hosted uh, 12, um, we, we, we have really loved it over the last uh, couple of years. Um, but I can't wait to hear a little bit more about how you put this together. I, I surrender cool. the floor to you, Mark. Thank you very much. And I want to say uh, a big thank you to everybody online tonight and everybody at Petaling Jaya. I hope I said that correctly. <laughs> and it's a real privilege to be here. And I was just saying uh, in the green room before we came on, it's kind of really interesting how we're all social distance, we're all staying apart. But because of this uh, pandemic and this moment, um, these online conferences have actually brought us all really closer together in the Pachacta community uh, around the world. Anyway, without further ado, I'm good to start and uh, let's kick this off. So my name's Mark Dytham and along with Astrid Klein, we run Klein Dytham Architecture in Tokyo. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of our projects just to put, the, uh, put us in context. This is a building called Ginza Place. It's on the most important crossroads in the center of Tokyo. And it's an 11-story mixed-use building, and the main tenant is Nissan. We also designed this project uh, called Daikanyama Tea Site. Um, it's about uh, ne nearly 10 years old now, but it's it's the, one of the world's most famous book bookstores, and really changed um, the, the 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 luck of, of bookstores after the iPad came out. And uh, this is one of the top 10 destinations in Tokyo right now. So 13 years ago, we came up with uh, Pachakja Night. It's a show and tell format uh, because architects talk too much. And we, we owned a, uh, a gallery space in Tokyo 
And we wanted to uh, allow young people to come and show and share what they do. But, you know, everybody talks too much. So we came up with this idea of 20 slides sharing for 20 seconds each, no forward, no back. And from a one-off event, it spread to an amazing 1,227 cities around the world. We don't charge for the format, and I think that's why it's, it's spread. But there's a definite need for people uh, to show what they're passionate about and uh, what, what, what amazing creativity uh, lies within your grasp. So this network grew around the world. And then in 2010, there was the earthquake in Haiti. And at that point, we were 600 cities. And we were trying to think of a way that we could get together and, and, and help Haiti. So we put on an online event. We had a streaming uh, presentation that ran all around the world. And we raised $100,000 uh, for Architecture for Humanity. Um, and along with Cameron Sinclair and the Ben Stiller Foundation, we built a school in Haiti. One small point is that the logo was designed by Shepard Ferry, the guy of Obey. Uh, it was really, really amazing moment. And uh, this really got us uh, really excited about what, 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 what great, what goodness Pachacha could do. A year later, you can see just a, one year later, the shoe was on the other foot and we had the earthquake and tsunami in Japan. And this is an area that we've been working in where, uh, you know, you can see that over you know, 130,000 buildings were destroyed in 20 minutes with the earthquake and tsunami. Um, I don't think people really understand the, the de devastation that really took place there. So again, we, we got to a year later after Haiti, we got together with our, with our group and, and thought that it'd be really nice if we could inspire Japan back. Japan's inspired the world with its fantastic designs and uh, could the world help Japan get back on its feet and be very positive. So we held an event um, just a month after uh, the earthquake and tsunami and all the Pachacta cities got, got together and made really inspiring pr presentations. And again, we raised $100,000 and uh, we, we, we built a building in, in Japan. Um, so we realized that Pachacha Network is incredibly powerful. This is a building, it's a sports building. And again, we work with Architecture for Humanity, Cameron Sinclair and N Nike to build these sports facilities. Many of the sports facilities were, were, were built on uh, because of the temporary homes. 25,000 temporary homes were built generally on sports fields. And so we were trying to find a play, make a place for kids to play. So we did all of this great work and um, we were we held projector presentations or projector nights um, in in the affected areas and in Tokyo, and we've realised that we've actually become this uh, really amazing news gathering or information gathering net network. And so over the ten years, uh, we've we've um, the amazing presentations have been made about uh, the, the about the disaster. And you can see on the left. Um, this is a presentation made by somebody that lives in one of the temporary homes. And on the right, this is Safecast. Um, it's a citizen uh, radiation monitoring net network, which has been built. And that's been actually coming you know, quite into the forefront right now for COVID-19. So not only did we have the earthquake in Japan, but uh, in one of our, our fantastic Pachacha cities, Christchurch in New Zealand, they had three major earthquakes and we, uh, again, ran Pachacha Inspire events for them and in Kumamoto in Japan and also in Nepal. And so it's been a great way to gather information and get, gather the positivity and the creativity in, in these really difficult situations. After BBC, CNN and Fox have moved, moved on, there is a great story to be told. And so that was the inspiration be be behind uh, Pachacha Inspire the World. I mean, this is really a global issue we have now, right now, global pandemic. And we've been holding these events. And our first event was only two weeks ago. And we got some of the world's best designers to, to, to show and share what they were doing. Carl Bass, the former CEO of Autodesk, was showing what he's up to in San Francisco, making personal uh, protection equipment. Uh, by by uh, clipping um, the the acrylic onto just sports hats, and then Cameron Sinclair comes back, who I mentioned he was working with Architecture for Humanity before, and he's building these or he's helping design these uh, pop up uh, hospital rooms called Jupe Health, and they can be built and towed and mobilized in, in anywhere in America. And then there's um, Tatigawa Sam from Nozina. So he's just taken a simple folder, an A4 folder with two cuts. You can make it into a face mask. This video has been viewed over a million times in four days. And this happened just last week. And he spoke at one of our events on, where are we? On, on, on Friday. 
He's also made these fantastic graphics which show what two meters apart act actually means. It can be a tuna, it can be the, the space between the beetles or the space between the tatami mat. So really fantastic, really creative and really inspiring. 20 seconds is quite long, huh? <laughs> so um, I want to mention that we've been making these some of these presentations on our new platform for Chat to Create. It's an online service where you can upload 20 images, voice them, and share them. And one of our presenters made a presentation from Wuhan. In fact, she was an intern at Pachacha, and she was stuck with her parents for 76 days. And she made a fantastic presentation. You can search it online uh, about her time in Wuhan. Really inspiring, too. So I want to thank you and everybody in Malaysia for helping make Projector so, uh, so special and so special tonight. It's been very special for me to present. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mark. And um, I remember hearing Whoa. one of the things you said um, in um, a previous uh, Inspire the World. I think you used the word, um, we are the last responders. And, right. and that's such such a good uh, capture of uh, uh, sharing stories, right? I really want to hear more about that from you a little later during question and answers. Uh, sure. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have those questions, please put them in the, the comments. And Mark, we'll see you in a little while. Thank you. Awesome. Um, I think according to the team, we have um, a, something wonderful to show you. Maybe if we can pull that up while the presenters were presenting, our friends at Inca, Mr. Chan Wai, has been drawing. Chan Wai, how does it look like? Uh, he's muted right now, but uh, he's doing some pretty wonderful things. We'll come back to that and check out how Chan Wai does um, a little later, but we see some wonderful drawings already happening. Um, let's bring in our second speaker. Our spe second speaker today is Dr. Jason Leong, a stand-up comedian. I've been to his shows. He is really funny, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Dr. Jason has been practicing comedy for the last six years, and he is the winner of the seventh annual Hong Kong comedy competition. You are Malaysian. You probably know him. But we have some international guests. We have 90 people tuning in from around the world. So for those of you who have not heard of Dr. Jason Leong, you are in for quite a treat tonight. Uh, Dr. Jason, today you'll be talking about comedy in time of corona. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Um, and how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. Wonderful. Um, the stage is yours. Okay. When do I start? Okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Jason Leong, a Malaysian stand-up comedian. I've been a professional stand-up comedian for about six years now. Uh, yes, as Hakim has mentioned, uh, most of you will, uh, would know of me. And for those of you who don't know, uh, what's wrong with you? Um, so I'll be talking about comedy during this time of Corona. Um, just some background. Uh, every year, I do a annual live tour. Uh, it's a brand new one hour tour. And these are my last two tours, Ambitious and Harmful is Swallowed. And this year, however, um, I, can't be, I won't be doing any tours. Uh, because as you can see in this slide, doing live startup comedy is actually uh, the very essence of not doing social distancing. For stand-up comedy, I need lots of people uh, grouped together, huddled together in one room for a long period of time. So this is not advisable. And since the MCO and lockdown commenced, all live events, let alone stand-up comedy, uh, has been cancelled. And I foresee that they will be dead in about at least the entirety of 2020 and maybe the first quarter of 2021. And uh, just an uh, international background, uh, three of the largest comedy festivals, the Melbourne Comedy Festival, the Edinburgh Comedy Festival, or the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, and the Just for Laughs Comedy Festival in Montreal has been cancelled. Uh, the Just for Laughs uh, Comedy Festival has been postponed, actually, but most likely it will be cancelled. 
Now, I know this is quite cliched, um, and I had to Google to make sure that Albert Einstein did say this, uh, but I believe that in this crisis lies an opportunity. And this opportunity, I've tried my best to seize uh, even when I'm on lockdown, even when the whole country is on lockdown. And I realized this uh, because nowadays, there are a lot of things which are already online. We do online delivery services, we do online banking, we do online shopping. So this lockdown has forced us stand-up comedians to shift to doing online comedy. And I have noticed three reasons why this is so. Now, the first one is everyone is now captive audience. We all don't have anywhere to go. We are stuck at home. And as you can see, we need entertainment. Okay. And it's not that our it's not that we have lost our audience, they have just shifted location. And as you can see, people are bored during lockdown. That is the norm, okay? Everyone is complaining that they are bored. That's why they're doing ridiculous stuff like uh, trying to cook. You can't cook, you have no talent, or doing TikTok videos. That's, be that's because people are bored. And as a callback to my first uh, my my first my third slide, everything is cancelled. Live events are cancelled. Um, even TV shows are cancelled or being postponed. So there is a dearth, a lack of comedic, uh, of entertainment options out there. So all these three factors have created the perfect storm for online comedy. And the reason why online comedy can thrive is because it's less complicated than other art forms. If you want to do music, you need to have your entire band with you and perform. And you need rather uh, sophisticated equipment to broadcast your music. However, for me, this is all I need. My laptop, the microphone that I'm using right here, and um, a camera, and that's all. I'm good to go with just these three things. And that's my setup right there, just a little bench. And with that, I've managed to create a uh, um, online shows like the all day show with no budget with Jason Leong. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this. I've come up with six episodes on YouTube and Facebook and cumulatively I've garnered 500,000 views. So at least 500,000 people have watched me and um, this has blossomed into other opportunities. Uh, I have now partnered with Yahoo to create exclusive content just for them. Uh, and I've been told that my first video, which is which, which is me talking about raising a daughter in lockdown, has gained about 200,000 views on Yahoo Singapore and another 200,000 views in Malaysia, in Yahoo Malaysia. I've also I've also done um, online stand-up comedy gigs, which is a, a rush. Uh, I've done this with Douglas Lim. I have also done live stand-up comedy for Crack House Comedy Club, which has also shuttered, but they have done they have put. Uh, their comedy gigs online. And all my friends across in other countries are doing the same thing. They are creating comedic content. Uh, Ernest Ng has gone absolutely viral with his uh, COVID ball uh, manga. My comedian friends are doing live streaming shows, the Rishi Report. And it's just amazing to see content creators around the world um, seize the opportunity and do something. And the reason why this is important it's because during this lockdown period, our mental health is at stake. There is a psychological toll to being cooped up at home. It's important to be cooped up at home for social distancing, but it takes a psychological toll. And despite it being so important, it's quite sad that, some, that our Minister of Arts has effectively forgotten the arts. And that's why I feel that it is very important to understand that Although science will save the world, it is arts which will make the world worth saving. I know it sounds cool, but it's actually a quote from Dead Poet Society, uh, re rebranded, um, spoken here by the great and late Robin Williams. So yes, arts is important, and it's it's. I hope that by me doing um, online comedy, I keep the arts alive. And thanks to Pe uh, Pecha Kucha, um, I get a, a platform to show what I've been doing and to also keep the flame alive. So to all those of you, uh, please stay at home, stay safe. And remember, it is together 
they will fight and win against this pandemic. United, we stand, but not so close together. Stay safe, stay at home, wash your hands. Hey, Jason. Uh, oh, you disappeared, but it's okay. Um, thank you so much uh, for that amazing presentation. Um, Yahoo, though, is, is that still a thing? Um, okay. <laughs> um, let's find out what this looks like. Can we zoom in to Chan Wai? And while we're trying to do that, um, I have a few things that I need to point out. Uh, reminder, if you have questions or you have things that you want to say, put them in the comments and we'll pull them out later for Q&As. Um, and if you have money in your wallet, especially those e-wallets, I hear they have faith also, um, you should uh, you should go to dignityforchildren.org slash donate. Um, I'm going to try and pull out a link for you guys so you can see that. Um, it's somewhere here for technology. Um, Okay, I'm failing at technology, but but you you guys get the, the, the idea. Go go to dignityforchildren.org. Still trying, still trying. Oh, there we go. Boom. Displayed technology. Leave it up for a moment. Um, we are on to our second speaker for the evening. Um, our next speaker coming up um, is. A very very interesting speaker. Thank you so much, Chen Wei, for the drawing. Um, we'll come back to you soon, soon, soon. Um, our third speaker for the evening. She plays a vital role um, in the fabric of society. Uh, she Whoa. is a teacher. <laughs> she's a teacher, and uh, she is a teacher in a SJKC um, school, which is a sekolah jenis a sekolah jenis kebangsaan Cina uh, Kai Chi. Um, and she mainly teaches upper primary students, uh, and she's done so for the last six years. Uh, her class sizes are about 45, so uh, I see that there are about 100 of you tuning in from around the world. Uh, why don't you drop some comments? Uh, how big was your class um, when you were growing up, and uh, what is class like in your part of the world? Um, our, our third speaker, uh, Chong Hui, she yeah you got that right <laughs> uh, yeah okay um we'll be telling us a little bit about online learning what's that um how are you feeling oh good good like i think it's a lot of people who don't really know what's going on behind the scene and they think teachers are having it easy not really but hey i'm about to share what i went through show us how the sausage is made <laughs> the screen is yours thank you hakim all right um online learning so what's that again so i've been teaching english for the past six years in a classroom so getting kids to learn is easy so what's not easy is that they're not in front of you so this is me understanding how online learning should work so what exactly is the difference um well in a classroom i get to do things with kids well keyword with so they get instructions on what they need to do. I get their feedback and on the spot that is, and this is important. And this is the kind of dynamic that you want in the classroom. So um, for example, so you go like, all right, kids, let's brainstorm for ways to avoid being late to school. And like, yes, Jason, you're having 10 alarms sounds like a good idea um, anymore. So then that's when like kids start putting their hands up to answer me. And that's when they give me more answers. So there's a lot happening in that 10 seconds. So um, the kids saw a doable challenge. They want to outdo their friends, be heard, and good answers get bragging rights. So why not? So everyone is engaged. Now, can this dynamics happen in a video call? So now, Let's replay that in the video call. All right, kids, let's brainstorm for ways to avoid being late to school. Um, crickets. So now everyone stares at the screen and then like they'll be like, do I raise my hands? Or um, uh, let's just shout out the answers like, and then 20 kids will be in your ears and nobody could hear anything or anyone anymore. So sure, I can make this better. Um, but is it worth it because like only half the class appears and what do I do with the other half? Repeat my class. 
and then repeat it again because only like half of that half appears. Not very practical, really. And accessibility is another problem for a teacher. Um, look at the picture. I'm that yellow person. And um, is everyone connected to me? No, because they don't have the device to do so. Like this is access. So now, not every family is a well-to-do family. So you can see that on the left one. But now look at the one on the right. That family only has two devices, three school going children with online classwork every single day. And who knows, one of the parents need it for work and there's just one left. So is online learning as accessible? Well, it's not an ideal world, so the kids can't go online whenever. So that's when I've decided that video calls is a no-go because like, but then I still need a platform. So I chose, oh, I had to use Google Classroom and it looks like this. Um, well, the kids would sign up in my class and then I post homework there, they can comment on it. Well, bonus is it's easily linked to educational sites. So one has already like ready-made quizzes. I um, took the easy way and gave the kids a bunch of quizzes. And then it became a boring cycle of quizzes. So, oh, you can see that. That's where the steps I went through. And after 10 quizzes, like I don't think any learning was happening and I wanted it to be more. So I thought, hey, the kids can stay updated with news. And uh, well, I could spend time making my own quiz based on that reading. So I took two hours to choose the text two hours to prepare a quiz and five seconds of smarty pants telling me that all my plans were stupid. Yeah, so it hit me very hard that my students don't find it useful or meaningful. And all they wanted to do was just like, ah, I'm just going to finish the quiz, that's it. Wow, so that brought me back to the drawing board. And if I wanted more, I need to think out of the box. So learning English shouldn't be this limiting, so I wanted them to venture out. I wanted to do something that I cannot do in school with the kids, so why not this? So I thought less on English and more on diversifying ways of learning. So one part of me thinks like, hey, you're in an English teacher, what are you doing? Like, I'm trying to teach, and I wanted three things from the kids, cooking, playing with technology, and getting meaning from my homework. Well, um, well, my rationale is that my students are 12 year olds, like they're old enough to cook and then they can present what they have cooked through Google Slides, it's free. And because they're making food for themselves and their family, I think this would be meaningful for them. The tricky part is the instruction. And uh, yeah, so no video calls because 15 minutes later, the kids would be like, hey, what did teacher say? Uh? And you'll be like, oh. So what you're looking at is a guide that I prepared and it's a desktop version on ideas on what to cook, how to use Google Slide and the functions that you need it. So it's kind of like imagine yourself teaching your grandma how to use a computer. And this one you're looking at is the mobile version. So I must assume that they start from zero and it has to be clear enough for a 12 year old. And most importantly, this guide is online and it's for them, for, it's for them to refer to whenever they need it. And ta-da! So this is when I got my students work and I made the right call. I really did the right call. And you're very distracted with why my student is drinking beer on the first picture. Calm down, people. It's just Heineken 0, 0.0. So yeah, this kid has pranked you and me and uh, just go ahead and laugh at yourself. But yeah, look at this work. It's brilliant. It's got English, it's got humor, and it's definitely what I wanted them to learn. So what if I did struggle and wasted a lot of time trying to find out what that is? Um, but I finally knew how online learning is going to work for me and the kids. So my takeaway from all this struggle is that if I wanted things to work, don't take it the easy way. Like I have to make it meaningful for myself and the kids, and that way everyone wins. So that's all from me. Thank you. Oh my goodness, that was so interesting. I didn't have a chance to see the slides before and I really enjoyed that one. Um, what was oh, the most you. interesting dish that they cooked? 
Oh, um, I think one did me a um, a longan lychee jelly. Like they went through all this this really hassle of like going like screenshot after screenshot, and then each one of the pictures they really like put a lot of effort in it. And I gave them like a empty template. They literally turn it into a designer template, and I feel kind of ashamed of myself. <laughs> Wow, technology being used for good and mm -hmm. tastiness. Um, thank you so much. Uh, um, we have, uh, we'll, we'll bring back more questions a little later. I see questions filling up with our uh, 103, 104 uh, uh, participants. I'm so excited. I feel so validated. Yeah, the moment we hit 100, we were like, okay, we're done. Um, no, no, no. But please keep them coming. Uh, tell your friends, tell your friends' friends, tell your friends' friends' dogs. Um, reminders. There are question and answers at the end, so please stick with us. Uh, if you've heard me mention dignity for children, uh, I am going to mention it again. But the context of this is I am going to invite up the representative from Dignity for Children to tell you a little bit about what are the wonderful works that they are doing right now to support families and kids that are um, affected by COVID. Hi, Renee. Hi, Akim. Hi, everyone. I give the floor to you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Pecha Kucha. Um, so yeah, I may call this morning and I'm so glad to be on here just to share a bit about Dignity for Children Foundation. Uh, not too sure how many of you have heard about us. Um, so this NGO is all based in Kuala Lumpur, uh, Sentul Boulevard, actually. So I'm a PJ girl. Uh, so prior to joining Dignity, I've not stepped foot much in Sentul because we always have the idea that, you know, Sentul is like gangster or a bit of a not so well off place, right? Um, but it's very developed now. So Dignity is actually located across shop lots in Sentul Boulevard. So to date, we have um, this year alone, enrollment is 1,800 children. Um, so prior to this, Hakim gave a very brief introduction to what Dignity do. So we're actually an education center, but it's a bit more special because it's not like government school or anything. Basically, it's also for the underprivileged, for the stateless, for those um, refugees that do not get access to our normal Malaysian government syllabus or even access to schools. So what happened is 21 years ago, our founders, uh, Pastor Elisha and Petrina, encountered illiterate um, kids, about 10 years old. Um, one of the kids came up to them begging for money, just asking for money for lunch. Um, but Petrina, instead of just giving the money for food, she just asked casually, um, you know, where do you live? Because she wanted to know more about this kid's background rather than just giving the food money and then that's it. So she actually followed, came back home and got to know a whole different living environment for this kid. And then she just asked if you could tell me your name and write your name. But this poor boy at the age of, was it 10 or 10 to 12 range, um, could not write his name. And so it started from there. Um, this kid was eager to learn and he got so excited when he got to learn just how to write his name. And yeah, I mean, vandalism aside, he actually started writing on the walls because there's no paper or materials for him. Um, so from there, he gathered his friends as well. He started as a tuition center and it grew over the years because the need was huge. Um, and to cater for that, it started with primary and then it grew because education to basically to break the cycle of poverty, the vision is through quality education for dignity. So it's one of the most comprehensive and biggest um, for the poor, I would say for quality education in Asia. So we have two years old all the way up to 19 years old. Um, Montessori syllabus is for primary and below for preschoolers. And then for the secondary, we do internationally uh, recognized syllabus for Cambridge because we have refugees that actually get resettled, so they go overseas. So this is something that they can use wherever they are, right? And then why quality education, right? Um, because if you come and visit um, our school, which by all means we do invite visitors um, after the ban is lifted, of course, um, what's 
sparked me when I first visited is that it looks really nice. Montessori, um, for those of you that know, it's really expensive for private um, um, parent, uh, private schools, for example, can go up to a few thousands a month for these preschoolers. But we have that for the poor, for people that can't afford quality education, for example. But I remember the founder said something that really um, struck me because we always think, why do we give second best to the poor? Why do we give the leftovers or donated items per se? But I was at that classroom with super nice Montessori materials, with super nice chairs and tables, and I felt dignified. I felt like, hey, if I'm poor, I wear a uniform, I come here, I feel like I could take on the world. I feel like I would be empowered, right? And that's exactly what the vision is. Um, not just for the founders, but it's a cross board for our 180 staff, even those that are serving back and in the kitchen, providing meals, for example. We all believe that it's quality that we give. So it's expensive to run the school. Um, we have a lot of different refugee centers that do come and visit and they were like, wow, how do you keep this going? But with the litter, with whatever that it is, that's why our, we have the Empower a Child program. That's why whatever donation that you guys are giving today, it all contributes to this. Um, so to cut the long story short a bit, so we have education for two years old all the way up to 18, but everything else, um, we also have sports. We also have welfare counseling for kids because they come from either traumatic background or whatever it is that they have been through. So it's a holistic education that we look into. So yeah, if you want to know more about Dignity, because I can't squeeze everything into five minutes, um, you can head on to our website um, or our Facebook. There's more about our COVID-19 relief efforts as well for the food distribution as well as virtual learning. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for sharing, Renee. This is, yeah. um, this is beautiful and we hope that um, our members and the people watching will be generous uh, and uh, empty those e-wallets uh, because there are people that need it. Thank you, Rene. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are three speakers in and uh, a social plug. We're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. Um, our next speaker, I, I, I hope that her, her tools are warmed up and she is ready to go because she is uh, she is a return speaker and uh, she the last time I, I saw her speak I believe she was not wearing shoes yes our fourth speaker Takahara Suiko of the hey. Venopian Solitude hi Taka hi Hakim hello everyone I'm you good. look How like you? you're uh, ready to 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 tango. Um, so, uh, not really. I'm just sitting down and ready to chill. I hear that you are trying kind of a new a new experiment today, and 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 I have like I'm thrilled to hear what's going to happen. It's a uh, 20, 20 songs. Yes, it was supposed to be twenty songs, but because of the slide, it doesn't it doesn't work. So. We just have to roll with it. There's some Dude, technical that's amazing. <laughs> well, um, I will let you take the floor and do your thing and uh, blow us away. Okay, thank you, Akim. Hello, everyone. I'm. <laughs> I'm just gonna not. I'm Takara Seiko, and uh, today I'm gonna talk about. The album that I've been doing, sort of, it's an ongoing album called It's Corona Time by my solo project, which is Viona. And it's uh, it's an album about songs that I did during the PKP slash MCO slash RMO slash CMO. So the idea came from No Saleh. I know if you guys know, he's a frontman of Wujan. He, uh, I think the first two weeks of PKP, he did like seven songs and upon seeing that I was like ah man I cannot the chabanya and then I feel like I have to do something with my life because by that time I was like bored as hell so I needed to so no gave me that 
inspiration. So the criteria for the songs is I have to pick something that is infuriating for myself or for people. PKP related. It has to be within the Twitter limit, which is 2 minutes and 20 seconds. I have to write, compose, produce, do everything in a day because that's a shelf life because there's a new issue every single day. And it's tiring. So the first song that I did is called Will Be Fine. It's a song dedicated to the frontliners and the people who does delivery, the delivery abang-abang and kakak-kakak and uncle-uncle and auntie-auntie. And, you know, how lonely it is for them to be doing all those things while everyone is like, you know, safe at home and they have to like go through the hassle. Okay, uh, the next one is uh, Mon Kiara. It's a song about the joggers in Mon Kiara who refuse to observe the MCO rules, so I just decided to. Hey, this song is for you, ah. You, why you gotta do stupid things and it's annoying? So I decided to write that. The third song is uh, about roti gardenia. I don't know if you guys have been to the stores, but uh, you know, gardenia is always sold out, almost always sold out. There's even a story someone told me that a person bought five, like lima buku roti gardenia, which is very selfish and inconsiderate so it's not cool so the next song is um a song about delivery for the delivery persons who have been you know delivers food and whatever that we need safely to our homes while they have to go through all the you know all the viruses out there so you gotta thank them the next song is T20 was directed uh, to this person who commented on Vivi Yusuf's Instagram. I think you guys know about this issue where she said uh, people who got the Prihatin money, they're probably going to buy iPhones. Like, no, we don't. iPhone is like 4,000. The money is only like 1,002. It's not even enough. You can't know it by food. The next song is for people who are working from home, WFH, and how their bosses are just inconsiderate and don't think that you have you only work nine to five. You don't work like twenty four seven. You don't work on the weekends. You gotta, you know, respect the working hour rule. Bosses, if you're hearing this, please understand. The next song is about our beloved uh, minister of apa Kementerian Wanita whatever. She asked us to use our Doraemon voice, you know, to our husband to sort of like dilute the tension in a way it doesn't work rina it just doesn't no it's bad the next song is um it's a combination of the cimb thing that happened and um the netflix series money heist that dropped around the same time so i just decided to combine both of them because someone someone said hey cimb is doing uh, some money heist thing over here so i just decided to do that the next song, I just wanted to use my bass because I have not been playing my bass for a long time. So this is a bass-powered song. Just wanted to do that. And it's about the darkness that you have within you, you know, during these tough times. And just have, ah, I don't want to deal with it, but I have to. I have no choice. Oh, I've been talking so much. Sorry. Um, the next song is uh, about the Hilton issue where there's this girl who just came back from holidaying and she said, and she saw a three-star hotel that was supposed to be like a quarantine hotel and she said, it looks like a prison. And we found out that after that, she actually got a Hilton hotel. The next song, wow, so fast. The next song is about TikTok, wherein our Kementerian uh, Pengajian Tinggi, yes, she said, hey, let's do a TikTok competition because these students are bored at their uni. No, they're not. They just want to go home. Why are you doing this competition? It's stressful. The next song, because of all the stress, I just decided to like chill down and it was like raining heavily at that time. So I decided to write something that is soft. I don't know what to call it. I just call it soft. It's about, you know, the rain during this PKP time. And I love the rain. And the next song is uh, Kanchil, uh, the car chase, the police car chase uh, between the, the car chase between the police and the Kanchil for 15 kilometers of a couple. So this song is actually a horny song talking about from the perspective of the couple to the point that well, I'm willing to run away from the, from the police because of you, my dear. The next song is um, about our menteri. Ah, so many about menteri. About our menteri that says, you know, he's, he had a who what what was it again like a uh, like a zoom session with 500 countries yeah not a good idea next time 
you know, make sure jangan fail geography. And the next song, I think the last song, the last song is uh, M&M. It's about Marhain and Menteri and how you know we have different rules for different social standards, so social status. Yeah, so there's uh, the Marhain rules and then there's the Menteri rules. That's the song about that. I'm so sorry. I'm just like... Okay, um, so right now I've been doing a 25 project. So basically each day for the next 25 days, I'll be writing about uh, the main prophets of Islam. Um, trying to not make it religious so that everyone can just like see it. This is a story based. So that's what I've been trying to do. I'm missing today because I have to do this Pesha Kucha thing. Okay, last but not least, um, those are my plugs. Uh, Bandcamp, Patreon, if you want to support me, if you want to listen to the songs, if you want to watch the video. Most importantly, if you have disposable income, please donate to Kita Jaga Doa US. Um, and wait. Uh, ah, and to any, you know, bodies that you want. Okay, thank you. <laughs> awesome, oh, Taka. I'm so sorry. <laughs> There was supposed to be like, songs. <laughs> there we go. Twenty seconds. That that's pretty short, huh? Yes. <sighs> um, where do we find all of these songs? Uh, did you record them, or are, are they um, text only? What's the situation there? Um, they are all songs that are available on YouTube. It's a uh, video form YouTube. So got lyrics and song, and also on Bandcamp. Only songs. That's, so yeah, you guys can go insane. check it out. Yes. So that means you need to record one every day. Yes, I try to. I try to. It's a challenge for me. Oh wow! Well, thank thank you for taking uh, your twenty uh, eighth off and uh, pecha kuchaing with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Akim. We'll come back to Taka a little bit later. Um, how are our scribes doing? They they are busy scribbling away and 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 scribing. Scribbling and scribing, uh, is that what we call it? Um, well, we are four speakers down. And uh, for those uh, scribes, uh, they, 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 their hands must be cramping up as they draw all of the um, presentations that are coming up right now. Um, links. Uh, if you haven't already and you're watching this on YouTube, smash the like button, uh, subscribe. Uh, if you're on the Facebook, uh, I think it's like us and, and follow us, something like that. We don't have a lot of followers, so we, we need validation and love. Uh, thank you. And uh, if you have money in that e-wallet of yours, you know where to put it. Dignity for children. Um, we're bringing on our next speaker. Our next speaker is a speaker that... Um, we actually called on uh, some time ago. I think it was Pechakucha 11, maybe Pechakucha 12. But he was not feeling well and he couldn't make it. But uh, now he's trapped at home. And as J Dr. Jason says, he's a captive audience. So uh, we roped him in to share the presentation that was. Um, our next speaker is Alex Lee. Hi, Alex. Alex from, is from Terapuri. He is uh, currently joining us from uh, Terengganu where he's a tourism entrepreneur and he's passionate about conservation of traditional Malay houses. And this is a passion that he's cultivated since he was a young boy growing up in Marang, which is in, Trengan is in Trenggan. Uh, his family is uh, of a Peranakan Chinese descent and he's lived in a house that was built by a typical Trenggan Malay style of architecture. I, I think that's what you're going to be talking about, right, Alex? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Alex, uh, what did you have for breakfast? Okay. Uh, you had pizza for breakfast, or we can't hear you. You might be muted. Uh, let's let's unmute you and. Okay. Ah, we can hear you. What did you have for breakfast? My breakfast for today. No, yeah. normally we I have nasi dagang, but not now. <laughs> I I want to be in in, in Trigano, but uh, failing which. Uh, I surrendered the floor to you so you can show us what beautiful architecture is in Trenganu like. Thanks, Akim. Hi, my name is Alex Lee. Uh, thanks, Pachakucha, for having me. This is my hometown in Marang, Trenganu. Okay, I've been grown up in this town, cowboy town. And 
the one with the blue color is my grandpa house and i turned this house into the guest house that was when i was about 20 years old which is about 30 years ago and uh, in Tenganu, of course you have lots of malay palaces or aristocrat house that left abundance so this is uh, we call it rumah bujang Basrambi. it's very nice house uh, it used to be a palaces in the old days beautiful architecture uh, with singora roof tiles uh, the the gable is a makara where uh, is a goddess of the sea they say and the the, the singora roof is a symbol of the scale of makara so they are they are so a uh, unique uh, malay house and we have very nice wall and they call it room uh, dinding janda bahias which is uh, full of carving i'm not sure why they call it dinding janda bahias maybe because it is so beautiful and in those days janda bahias may be you know beautiful so uh, it's nice and this house is being built by chunga wood and in the old days the Malay also they have a German sea, like a Chinese where you have phone suite. So normally the height of the house, they will use the arm length of the ladies. So let, let's say some house is about 5.6 uh, duper or 5.8 duper. So this is uh, the duper. So in every duper, they have their phone suite measurement. Okay. And uh, to, to bring out, this is what we call rumah, uh, the Tian Suri. So the, the phone suite measurement, like we said, the German sea, let's say you, you have tinga tanga gagak kepatuanan so this is a bad uh, phone suite they try to get a good one a good one like you know harimau pahlawan so which is a good one and every pillar of the malay house we have a cloth we have white red and black white symbol of purity black is a uh, black spirit and the red is a uh, symbol of courage so this is we call bunga halam to protect the house from evil spirit and uh, the main pillar of the house, where we call Tiansari, there's a bottle of wine called Mina Chanua Kampo, where this wine, it will make the house look bursary. So bursary is Indian word, so it means that uh, the house will look bursary, beautiful. And also, uh, this is work as uh, protection as well. And uh, in, in our uh, place, palaces, we have a nice gopan or, or ash. So, in fact, in the old days, the arch is a symbol of the how, how strong is the, the kingdom in the old days. So, the, the mountain on the top is symbol of Meru. Um, and some house, this is what we call Pari Laksmana, is uh, where, where back in the Ramayana story, where Laksmana draw a circle to protect the, the owner, uh, the, the Sita Devi from the kidnap by Rawana. So, in the Malay community, we have this also as a protection of the house. And uh, this is in Jawi, but where we call it uh, Al Hasbu Kafi. It's about seven slippers that they believe in God. They've been chased by the king and, and they ran to the king. The, the, the God made them speak for 309 years. So they have Mats, uh, Matsamina, Paitunus, and so on. So for doing this project, I have 29 unit of uh, old Malay palaces to restore so um, we need a good tukang so this is uh, the carpenter our carpenter we have about 30 carpenter that works we uh, the, the first phase of our project is about five years to 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 you know and then we have another three years to finish the whole things and uh, of course we inspire by the old kingdom a kingdom called Langkasuka is way back in the second century and disappear in the 12th century uh, roughly in Patani so that, that the kingdom is a Malay kingdom. So this is where the source. So to do this project, I have to go around to search for you know, the, the architecture. We have to go to the cemetery, the old cemetery, to look for uh, what is the old identity of uh, Langkasuka, where is the kingdom, the Malay civilization that you know, lost. So the stupa, the flora carving, and this is uh, Terapuri meaning land of palaces we have 29 units where a beach, uh, we put it in Penare, uh, Trunganu is by the beach and also by the wetlands at the back so at night you can see uh, five flies at the back okay and um, this is uh, the house this house is our reception where uh, we use as, as a reception for 
for, for the guests to um, to register there. And we, we beside the uh, reception, we also have a central courtyard where, yeah, it's, we call it exercise courtyard. So exercise courtyard where we bring uh, a lot of artisans to come and perform there. For instance, like the dying of Mark Yon, Wayang Kule. And of, of course, we have our you know, mindful tree sometime. Even uh, uh, we have uh, the traditional dance as well. And these are our rooms. Our rooms, uh, we use old furniture. Uh, this is the, the, the old furniture that, that we turn around. And we want the guests to experience to stay in the old Malay palaces. And uh, of course, uh, we have modern facilities like air condition, attached bathroom. And we have a simple uh, small meeting room as well. This is 18 uh, seater meeting room. And the table uh, is an antique table. In our first primary, the Latin program, we used to chair meeting when we was in Trenganu uh, during that time, uh, those days. And we service this table from one other place. So the Malay architecture is full of philosophy. And uh, that one philosophy said, Tumbo uh, Pepunca, Punca Penurasia, Tumbo Tidak Menajak Kawan, Memanjak Tidak Memaul Lawan, Tetapi Melingkap Penuh Mesra. Meaning that grow the source, source full of secret. And uh, I mean, they, they believe in God. And uh, the friends, they have to work together. Uh, to achieve uh, synergy. I think that's all. Thank you very much. Going on. Ah, I'm back. Thank you so much, Alex. That was beautiful. Um, and, and how does one uh, get a booking at something like this if it's not doing MCO? I can't hear you, okay? Um, and how does one book a place at a, a, um, a wonderful oh, okay. accommodation? Uh, I just have to, have to email us. Uh, of course, we'll be selling on online travel agent as well. Uh, mm -hmm. after, after the MOC, we have a very special rate uh, for, for guests who come you know, and enjoy the architecture. Beautiful. I can't wait to hear more about that. Um, uh, for those of you who could not uh, hear what's going on, make sure to tune in a little later. I will recap what Alex says as he answers questions. Thank you, Alex. And oh my, is it not just the most beautiful uh, pictures that are being uh, illustrated today? Uh, our Batik Girl short film was in Trenganu. Oh yeah, there we go. Trenganu is awesome. And I mean, if you can eat nasi dagang for breakfast, everybody wants to be in Trenganu. Come on. What's up, people? Um, yes. Alex was speaker number five. I have to remind you that we have one more speaker uh, uh, left for you. But before I bring him on, I want to uh, check, has anybody um, taken the time to check their e-wallets? and see if they have some money to spare for our friends at dignityforchildren.org. Um, would really love for you guys to uh, share the love and make sure to uh, put into the comments that it, uh, PKPJ sent you so they'll know. Um, and then they're like, oh, yeah, awesome. Pecha Kucha people, they're super generous and they're super awesome. And clearly, they're super interesting. Um, and uh, on the note of interesting, our final speaker, um, Ernest Ng. He's a content creator. Uh, he's on the YouTube. Uh, hi, Ernest. And um, he's also a web comic. Um, he's been putting out some really awesome stuff. He's got a book. And uh, I think that came out in about 2014. But quite right. recently, the COVID period has gotten you busy. Right, Ernest? Uh, very and much so. Fantastic. And, and Ernest will be telling us a little bit about some of the work that he's been doing uh, for illustration and comic artistry during the time of COVID. Ernest. Yeah. Just now when you called me, I was actually in the middle of drawing. <laughs> so I'm actually still drawing the next chapter right now. So <laughs> You must be drawing every day, huh? Almost. La, almost. Damn. That sounds intense. And thank you for taking the time to uh, put the pen down for a moment and uh, I hit the slides. Um, I 
surrender the next six minutes and 40 seconds to you, Ernest. Okay, hi guys. Uh, I'm Ernest. As you know me, I draw cartoons online mostly. Um, I'm a webcomic artist, or I would say a comic book artist. I've been drawing for the past, uh, professionally for the past 10 years, uh, but I started drawing since I was, uh, my first comic, I drew my first comic when I was five. Yeah, that was, uh, and I was the kind of guy, I was kind of student that likes to draw in my exercise books or my buku latihan. In fact, I still do keep these books. Uh, I took this picture like last week. So yeah, they're all intact. The carbon from the pencils are a little bit faded, but I have a lot of these uh, exercise books that I used to draw in. And um, back in school, I was also the kind of student that uh, didn't like to go to class because uh, the teachers uh, would always uh, pick me to go and uh, draw murals in the school canteen or the school walls. And I would always say yes, because I can skip classes. So I can draw and paint on walls. Uh, some other teachers didn't like it very much, so I got punished for it. So uh, I'm going to introduce to you a few of the big, uh, most viral works that I've done. Uh, this is called the Godzilla problem, and I got inspired to do this one after watching the movie itself. So uh, how I tackled this um, this topic, it came in three stages. Uh, one is uh, identifying the problem. Second is finding the solution. And the lastly is uh, get the final answer. Lah. So for me, I after watching the movie, I realized there was this big problem where um, Godzilla seems to be on the surface of the sea, but uh, he's not tall enough. Yeah, uh, the sea is actually about 3,000 meters deep on average, and Godzilla is only 120 meters. So I came up with a lot of um, ideas of how he could have possibly done that. Um, so we have mountain, uh, we have rubbish, we have a friendly wheel giving him a ride or a nimbus cloud. Uh, they're actually like, more than 10 solutions and I actually wanted to cut out some but I, I thought it was not funny but then my girlfriend was like saying you know what just put everything and this was my final result I just decided that yep the the punchline is this one where yes Godzilla just has uh, really long legs and he's uh, not the king of monsters he's actually the king of legs yeah so uh this is uh this one really went uh viral worldwide about 100,000 shares and uh next one is the cool kids, yes. Um, I posted this sometime about in August last year. Um, it didn't go as viral as the Godzilla one because Godzilla one was shared worldwide. This one was uh, shared mostly in Malaysia, about four thousand shares. Uh, but still, I really enjoyed doing this one, and I'm gonna uh explain how I was inspired to come up something like that. Um, it all started because uh the McDonald's in Bukit Bintang uh came up with a signboard uh MACD M E K D I. And uh, there were a lot of memes online, um, you know, uh, shortening all these fast food names like KFC, the SKFC, uh, Pizza Hut, SP Jet Hut. Then I thought that I should sketch them out as characters. Then I realized they forgot one person, which is AMW. Um, and I kind of like imagine what if all these fast food were like uh, students in school? And yep, <clears throat> MACD and KFC is the cool kids, and I'm the not so cool one because I like to draw. So I end up as NW, the not so cool kid. So I'm the set there. Um, after that, I was inspired to actually uh, draw all of them. Uh, you know, uh, so I sketch all the fast food that I can think of in a in a class setting. These are all the sketches that I have. I don't usually share this with anyone. Uh, so yeah, I was, I'm actually quite embarrassed with my sketches actually. So, but yeah, you guys can see it here. So I I, I did some and um, some. Of the characters, I had to like readjust if they don't really look like the initial sketches because sometimes you have to update the designs of the characters. You can see Texas Chicken looks different and Rumley Burger also looks different. Um, as as I progress, I like to like make changes to improve on the initial design so I don't follow the sketches hundred um, percent. And I compile all of them and put them in the classroom and give them uh, characteristics. And there you have it. Uh, from a simple signboard in Bukit Bintang became like a viral content that I did last last year and um this pro uh, this artwork got got me a lot of uh, opportunities i sold t-shirts which sold very well and um yeah and uh, the recent my most recent work is called covid ball z i actually had no idea what to call it and i just like you know what just whack one name take the word dragon ball z and just change it to covid ball z uh this is an ongoing series right now uh it's actually my most stressful project right now uh, because every week i have to come up with a new chapter so it all starts off with me uh, drawing boxes and frames and to plan out the story, how it will go, because I only limit myself to about 10 to 11 pages. 
per chapter. So this is actually the most challenging part. I hate this part the most because uh, to, to fit everything into 10, 11 pages is actually quite challenging. And especially um, how you want to combine, how you want to store the flow, it's uh, very important to keep it uh, you know, concise. Uh, this is the process. I usually sketch them with a blue 2B pencil first, uh, a blue blue colored, uh, blue color pencil. Uh, we'll sketch it out like this first. Um, this is actually quite fast. I actually can complete uh, 10 pages of sketches in an hour. Uh, then I'll move on to inking. This is the inking stage. And this is actually the most boring stage. Um, I don't fancy this stage uh, a lot, uh, but not as much. I, I hate uh, scripting more, but this is all right. Uh, not, not as, I don't hate this as much, but uh, it's very boring because you're just uh, tracing back the lines that you draw. And how I reward myself is to always uh, ink the favorite panel the last. And actually what you're looking at is my most favorite panel, uh, my most favorite page actually because uh, it involves a lot of characters and colors. And then after once you're done with inking, you uh, put in all the major colors. As you can see, it still looks a bit flat, um, not as interesting. So uh, you add in some background, add in some shadows, add in some like shiny effects, smoking gun, uh, and then you basically have your artwork lah, and you know to give it more flavor and more um, depth and makes the image looks, the artwork looks nicer lah, uh, for me. Uh, at least to me, la. I have to feel that it's nice, you know, I'd be a bit embarrassed to post it up. And then I'll just put in the text, um, and there you have it, one page. Uh, a page like this can take about uh, two, two hours, two to three hours, uh, one page. It depends on how many elements in this. Uh, this one is quite complicated because there's a lot of different, different things and different, different colors. So this one took me about like three and a half hours. Yeah, and that's it. That's how I draw my comics. Awesome. That's uh, that's quite a fair bit of work. Um, and do you do this alone, uh, or are there other people helping you with the coloring? And uh, what do you think? yeah, what do you think? It looks like a labor of love. So I'm gonna go with one man army. Yes, correct. I do this by myself. Yeah, it's a nightmarish process that I uh, impose upon myself every day mm -hmm. uh, doing this MCO. But at least it keeps me busy, lah. And how many hours a day are you are you usually uh, uh, coloring? Uh, to give you an idea, it's uh, just now you can see that when I just came into the studio, I was really tired because I've been awake since seven o'clock and I'm still drawing oh, until wow. now. <laughs> so it's uh, most of the times like that. So um, I really appreciate everyone um, sharing and uh, you know my stuff, uh, but just don't steal it lah, you know, because it takes a lot of uh, time to do it. And I really yeah. appreciate when someone shares it. Yeah, that's amazing, man um well thank you so much for sharing uh i think everybody uh i mean sharing both today as well as uh sharing in general during this COVID period i think everybody uh is enlightened by or rather uh everybody's days are brightened um by uh the uh, artwork that you put out um at least mine was when i first saw it so amazing work um we have questions next um i i, I as i understand it the technical capacity of uh, the platform requires the questions to be taken in two parts. Uh, so the first part uh, is going to be, th there we go. Taka maybe, maybe not here at the moment. Maybe we switch it out for somebody else. Um, if that's all good. Uh, Master of technical things, Yilin. Um, so now is your chance, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, get those questions in. Haven't seen any uh, questions per se. Ah, Jason, uh, Ernest, and Alex. We're gonna we're gonna uh, get you guys to do the first round of questions, and then uh, we're gonna jump on to the other speakers. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a rapid fire. Okay, cool. Um, so one each. Hello. Uh, hey, Jason. Uh, how has apparent failure? uh set you up for later success basically what is your favorite failure uh, uh jason it's uh um actually uh i have uh, a lot of failures uh, my favorite worst gig was when i performed in kota kinabalu in 23rd january 2013 there were three comedians the first one did well. I was the middle. I died completely. And the third one did well. So the fault was all in me in my performance. Uh, I went back to my hotel room, nearly cried because it was my birthday. 
So oh, no. that was the worst gig I've ever done. But that made me realize that, especially this this was a corporate gig. So corporate gigs are very challenging. So that made me realize that I had to do, I had to employ a lot of tricks to get the corporate crowd to listen. Uh, like have a really good intro, a uh, good intro music. A good introduction. Uh, play a video be before the uh, before I come on stage stage so that they'll be engaged to know what is going to happen on stage. Um, and that has r really changed my weight and my approach whenever I'm performing at such corporate events. And thankfully, it has shifted for the better. So yes, in failure, in failure, I learned how to be successful. It's super cool. Um, we have a question from Mukris. Uh, for Ernest, could you please do a line from uh, the Bangalore role from YouTube? Bangalore? I I, I never uh, played a house before, so I don't think I'm able to do that. Okay, we'll come back to that one then. <laughs> um, I will shoot you one uh, for that one. Let's say you had, <laughs> you had let's say you had a, a billboard, like a huge billboard and it could say anything you wanted it to, um, like like a phrase or a, a paragraph uh, to, to, to beam out into the, the world, what would your message be, Ernest? Wow, I, I've never thought of it because I'm not that self-indulgent and uh, I wouldn't spend that amount of money to go and put a stupid phrase on the billboard. So. I will take that money and do something else. Lah. So I don't I will, I will not put a phrase on the billboard for there's a waste of time and money. There we go. Um save your money, ladies and gentlemen, and keep those billboards. Everything is going to be <laughs> still on YouTube. Um and uh I, but uh until we get him on, maybe we can pull on somebody else. This is uh this is nice and exploratory and fun. Um, okay, we have more people. Ah, there we go. Chegu. Hey, you. All good? I, I hear... I think I hear myself. Yeah. Okay, but cool. Um, I'm not sure yes. who I'm hearing myself from, but... Uh, <laughs> When do you get smarty pants students? Uh, do you have any sick burns? Uh, <laughs> I'm always ready for a sick burn, really. But it, but the thing is, like now we're having MCO. I, I kind of miss that part of like being in a class. Um, yes, I do. Should I actually be in front of smarty pants right now? I would actually ask this person like, so do you think that all I've done is very meaningless to you? And then I'll really love to listen to this Marty Pants answer. <laughs> I really took so much time preparing that thing though. And aside from the cooking, are, are you working on any other kind of engaging sort of like class um, projects, do you call them? Um, well, okay, you see here, um, well, the reason I actually came up with that cooking project is because like they're all at home and um, obviously you can't cook in school. <laughs> so that's why I had that. And um, also the next thing I'm actually trying to work on is actually getting them to read me a story, but I'm trying to figure out how are they going to record an audio and then share it with me because we're still, you know, dealing with 12 year olds and they'll be like, Teacher, where can I find this? How do I record? How do I send it to you? How do I share it with you? And then um, I have to address all this before I assign that assignment. So yeah, I have to figure something out there. I see. So um, how long did that one take to, to uh, realize with all the technical uh, challenges? Uh, for a cooking project, um, it probably took me three days to fully conceptualize everything. So the first day was actually getting the idea out. The second day was actually trying to find all the resources that are actually available for the kids because like what one kid knows how to use doesn't mean like another kid knows where to find them. So I found that Google Slides is there, so it's free to use. So why not we just utilize it? And um, I think the last day, which is day three, is the day that I gotten everyone the assignment out 
through Google Classroom. Wow. Okay. And uh, do you have any uh, students that are like uh, interested in drawing or uh, uh, comics? Uh, maybe Ernest has some advice like on how he started and uh, learned to draw, I suppose. I uh, think Ernest practice. would be very happy to know that I'm one of those teachers that will never confiscate your book and in fact admire it. Because <laughs> the oh, kids wow. like, Thank you. <laughs> like the kids like I, I've realized that kids really love to draw. Like um well it, it does get me angry that my book, my exercise book get drawn on. But then like, you know, kind of think of it like, you know, like I'm good in English, that's why I became an English teacher. And if this kid is good in drawing, then let them be. Yeah, that's true. Uh, drawing takes uh, many years of practice. A lot of people tell me I got talent, but I think it's mostly practice. Like I've been drawing since I was five. So even then, I do still think my drawing is rich. So it's a learning process. Uh. Yeah, definitely. And and for all of the jokers in your class, uh, uh, like how did you pivot from that uh, comical, sorry, uh, the uh, doctoral, uh, situation to to comedy uh jason maybe um, there's advice here for some young people um i think you might be muted jason let me check i mean how to pivot from com uh, from medicine to comedy yeah how did that happen hello can you hear me yeah hello yeah, sorry, what was the question again? How did you end up pivoting from medicine to comedy? Oh, um, I, I, I've always liked comedy and I've always enjoyed public speaking. And in 2010, there was an open mic comedy competition, uh, an open mic comedy show in Kuala Lumpur. So I drove four hours from Penang. I was working there. And I did my first gig. They gave me five minutes. I did nine. Uh, it went well. I was really, really lucky. And I've never stopped looking back since. So, um, But I only became full-time in 2014. So I've saved, saved up enough money. I knew I could make some money, enough money doing comedy. And then I switched. So I was doing two jobs for a time. Then when I was confident in switching, I switched and I never looked back. Fantastic. Um, are you making more money now? <laughs> such a such a question. <laughs> but see, you know, uh, are you happier? What is the metric? Yes, uh, I'm happier now. I'm I'm definitely making more money. I was making more money uh, than uh, than my than my doctor salary, and but I'm not making any money now doing this for free. <laughs> They need so, to maintain the license please, on that one, right? Uh, please, please pay lah. I've, <laughs> I've spent a lot of time here. Okay, okay. Well, uh, we're, you, we're all rooting for you. We're, we're all rooting for you, uh, Jason. Um, when, when the next uh, when the next uh, online show comes about, uh, make sure there's a donate <laughs> button. Yes, please. Uh, um, so guys, uh, to give the rest of the speakers a little bit of a go, I'm going to cycle you guys around and uh, Yilin, maybe we can get our other speakers on and ask them some questions. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey, Mark. Hey, Teka. Oh. Hi. And Alex. Yeah, Alex, can you hear, hear us uh, at the moment? You had some difficulty hearing us earlier. Okay, well, Alex sets up again. Uh, Mark, uh, tell us a little bit about that cra this crazy experience that the last, uh, what is it, seven years must have uh, been for, for uh, Pichibucha? Yeah, it's, it's been, well, we actually, actually, I actually said 2013, it's actually 2003 we started, but um, it, we started off as a one-off event in Tokyo. Uh, we owned an art space. And um, yeah, we didn't have enough events for the space. And 30, um, 2003, it was the dawn of digital photography where photographs would actually be 10, 24, 7, 6, 8. And we had Keynote on the Mac, so it didn't crash like PowerPoint used to. And 
every Monday morning in our office, uh, we started having these show and tells about if people had been to a construction site or a factory visit from one of our projects, or been somewhere interested in seeing, you know, um, you know, an interesting piece of architecture. Suddenly, we got digital photographs which were instant, and we could put into a keynote presentation and cycle through them on a Monday morning meeting. And we've been having those meetings for 17 years. We have a keynote presentation for every Monday morning meeting. But at that wow. point, we realized that, you know, this is quite interesting, you know, but I'd like to know what other people have been up to because we've all got digital cameras now. And so we set up this show and tell format and um, in our art space and how we could get 100 people to come. Well, if you invite 10 people, they'll bring 50 friends or they'll bring five friends each. That's 50 people to start with. But the problem is that designers and architects talk too much, especially me, you'll find out. And uh, they'll get an architect will get excited about a handrail detail or a piece of structure and will talk forever. So we came up with this idea, maybe 10 slides, 10 seconds, but that's only a minute 40. And then ah, about 20 slides, 20 seconds, that's six minutes, 40, 400 seconds. That sounds pretty good. And, and we had we ran a night like that. We had 14 speakers the first night. And many people said they'd like to have another night. And so next month we had another night. And uh, last Friday we had our 170th Pachacha night in Tokyo uh, online. Um, and um, yeah, it, it, it's been amazing. And then about after about 2006, other cities um, sort of, we had to Tokyo Design Week. And we held it there. Other people saw what we were doing, said, I'd like to take it to our, our own city. And suddenly we're in 20 cities. Then suddenly we're in 100 cities. And as I say, today we're in 1,227 cities, including yours. And what we've discovered is that cities are the most important thing. For, we need to forget countries. Countries are past and finished. And I think Corona-19 has proven that, really. It's about city by city. How strong is your city? It's not the country in, anymore. And uh, we have these great conversations with cities, and they can be in Hong Kong, they can be in Taiwan, they can be in China, they can be... It, we don't care where they are. They're city names, and cities are very, very strong. And I, I really like this. Cities being the most important thing, not countries. That was a long awesome. answer, wasn't it? <laughs> you see? And do you have That's to why know we what... 20 slides, 20 seconds. <laughs> but it's a good limitation. Uh, what is that they say? Creativity uh, excels in constraint. Um, uh, how did you have, have any idea how many of these Pachacucha uh, talks have actually transpired over the last? Uh, um, well, however many. Yeah, we're we're about we um, we think we've had about a hundred thousand people on stage. It's kind of amazing. Wow. Um, we 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 have um, we have about fifty um, online. We have about twenty eight thousand presentations online. It's an incredible archive, um, and um, it's just getting stronger and stronger, which is really amazing. And I think the most important thing is there's a very digital physical connection, and I think that uh, most formats lack that. They're either online or offline and um mm. because we have this di digital archive we we can if there's a flywheel there which is very very strong super interesting wow and, um, that. <laughs> uh, and, and it looks like uh, we are ready i think that's the signal that the team is giving me hakim say <laughs> things that are I'm visually too much. That's what it means it means mark's talking too much so. <laughs> Taka, this is your second yes. presentation. Uh, do, do you want to sing first? Because the first one, I believe, uh, shoes were taken off uh, uh, and and music was made. Um, I I I want to I want to push Taka for a little bit of a music, and then uh, we'll, we'll do thanking everybody, and then uh, we'll wrap. Okay, Taka, I'll try to sing. Um, this song I wrote. This song it has nothing to do with the MCO, but it's um it's relatable. It's about the time when we are struggling with our inner demons and we thought that there's no one there to help us. But then again, at the end of the tunnel, there's always someone having our back. Wait, wait. Okay, this song is called Te no Hira. It's in Japanese. We're going to sing a bit of it. One, two. For 
歪んでる心。悲しみで済ませてた日々、限界に近づいてる。無意味な物事に囲まれる。いつ終わるの歪んでる心。そろそろ耐えられないでしょう。That's amazing. Wow, fantastic. Oh, すごいですね。日本語上手ですね。信じられない。ちょっとびっくりしたです。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。どうも。日本語は出せますね。<笑>びっくりしました。本当にびっくりした。<笑> See, it's almost as if we planned that the two people can, can speak Japanese. <笑> hey! <笑><笑>大ショックですよ。<笑>素晴らしい。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。Thank you so much, everybody.、Um, wow. You guys have been amazing.、Um, I want to take a minute to just say、uh, Pechikucha is、uh, happening and it will continue to happen、uh, throughout these、uh, crazy times that we're in.、Um, and、uh, to, to show our thanks to, to everybody, I'd like to,、uh, I'd like to do a little bit of show and tell.、Um, if we can bring up the screen, I think it's that one.、Uh, This is what、um, was put together. So we had three.、Uh, ah, yes, yay. Hi, guys. Hello. <laughs> you guys have been furiously, you furiously、uh, uh, scribing and drawing. And I see the sweat on your brow, Chanwei. Hi, June. Hello. How are you? Hi, Sam. <laughs> Hello.、Um, so who's from? Uh, Singapore. I know one of you is from Singapore. I'm just not sure which one. Two of us. Okay. Oh, two. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Brilliant. Thank you so much for uh, your uh, uh, beautiful drawings from across the causeway.、Um, these are really awesome, and we can't wait to share them with our speakers. They make really amazing、uh, keepsakes.、Um, can we show off some more of the artwork? I love the colors, they are so vibrant and Um, um, oh, that, I just love the expression on Dr. Jason on this one. He captured him. We're not saying that he's grumpy. He's not. He just, he just captured the experience. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Yep, I, I totally love the burger action. Thank you so much,、uh, Taka. Wow, that's an awesome illustration, guys.、Um, I'm sure the speakers are going to be. Totally in love with them. Alex,、um, the man with the beautiful、um, uh, hotel situation, as well as、um, the beautiful, beautiful breakfast situation. <laughs> Where is the breakfast? Oh, wow. Yes. So I think of all the speakers, our, our, penal, our、uh, final speaker、um, will、uh, feel the、uh, ache in the fingers the most. And he will,、uh, I, I hope that he will appreciate this the most.、Um, thank you so much, guys, for illustrating this. And for those of you who are still watching, I see there are about 51, of you, 51 people watching.、Uh, I want to thank you guys.、Um, please、uh, follow all the socials for、uh, our friends, uh, uh, Inca.、Um, you can check it out, Incagram and Instagram.、Um, Like our Facebook page,、um, go check out all of these speakers. I believe there is a bit.ly link.、Um, can somebody pull that out? I think it was a bit.ly slash pkpj13. Um, uh, some, somebody in the background, help me out here.、Um, if that is the one you should go to, I think you'll have links to all of our speakers and, and all the cool stuff. This video will be、uh, online and available for re watching and、uh, making fun of my hair.、Um, thank you so much, speakers. Your、um, sharing has been inspirational. And、uh, to all of the folks on the front line,、um, Thank you so much for the wonderful things that you are doing to keep everybody else safe. And everybody else, if you're watching this, you're in the right place. Oh, there we go, that's the link.、Um, if you're watching this, you're in the right place.、Um, do your thing, do your part by washing your hands, staying at home, and、uh, all that jazz.、Um, love you all. And this is、uh, Hakim signing off. Bye.